Have you ever noticed that the seven wonders of the world are all based on land? Cathedrals, statues, fortresses and pyramids? Well, for sailors, the seven greatest wonders are quite different. Our world's oceans are full of incredible sights that so few will ever get to see. When we chose to live a life on the water, we were so excited to discover and share these stunning, untouched parts of the world. And today, we sail to the Stuff of Legends, a remote corner of the South Pacific, said to be home to over 700 sharks. While this may sound terrifying to some, for adventurers like us, we simply couldn't resist. It might be a little bit hard to tell, given how windy it still is, but believe it or not, the storm that we have been waiting to pass over us has now left. This is kind of the remnants of that storm. And so we've decided it's about high time that we lifted anchor and got moving again. We're gonna make our move to the South Pass of Fakarava, which is just over there. And um, if anyone knows anything about Fakarava, you know that that's why people come here. Well, it's, it's legendary. Over there, we we're hoping to sail all the way and then ultimately drop anchor at the Wall of Sharks, which just sounds wonderfully ominous, doesn't it? I am so glad that we have these rain curtains finished well. I said plural, we've only got one because I haven't made the one for the other side yet. But um, yes, came in very handy this week. And now we just have to like stow it all. It's quite windy today. Man, these things are such a stupid design. Yeah, these came like original on the boat and I don't love them, but... No, they're sucky because <laughs> like that stupid winch cover thing means you can't put them on and off very quickly and then you can't use the winch. <laughs> you can't use it underway, but it's annoyingly good at keeping the cockpit dry. So yeah. we've kept them for now while we're at anchor and there's a big storm coming through, but I will intend to remake them at some point. Someday, somewhere. And like fold that bit away so it's just like a little boop. Yeah, that's all it needs to be. And then little securings along the bottom. Yeah, I don't know. I'll figure something out. It feels like the anchorage has really emptied out actually since we got here. Um, I think an awful lot of people were thinking the same as us, hide for shelter and then leg it. Hopefully most of them have gone back up to the North Pass, which is where we were before, and so the South won't be quite so busy. Let's go! Do it! This is us at the bridal now proper bedded in, I guess. Yeah. All right, we'll drive forward and kind of lever the anchor out. Yeah, that's locked on the manual lock now. So just try going forward, it should lift it. I think that's probably yeah, done it. I think it. it's just a lot of sand. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. And so with that, we just clear our anchor on Zora and we are good to go. looking like it's supposed to be kind of calming down today it's right on the edge of what we thought we'd do so i was secretly hoping we could get full sails and run down the, the end of the island here but it's kind of sitting around one 110 120 and 110 is about our limit before the main sail starts to shade the genoa so if you think the two sails are up and then the wind is coming from here it just blocks all the wind reaching that second sail so we tend to put the main sail away if we're downwind but uh it's just on the line. Like, we could maybe get away with it, or maybe just be lazy and do Jenna only. I have to admit, I'm kind of feeling lazy today. Um, we're only going like an hour down the coast, so it's not that far. We would go faster, probably, if we had the main up, but then there is more to think about making sure that it, like, isn't actually just slowing us down or that we have to put a preventer on or something, so... I'm tempted to take the lazy route and do Genoa only and just... We've got all the time in the world, there's no rush to get there. 
Ooh, it swung to 90. <laughs> okay, we've gone back and forth on it. And uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to pick the main up. And then if we don't need it, we'll take it down. But it's way easier to pick the main up first and then the Genoa. And then take the main down if we don't need it, then the other way around. So um, we're on the fence about it, but we'll get back to it. Eh, sailing, it's all the fun of it, right? So we tried to film picking all the sails up, but we think possibly the camera crashed. So um, the sails are up. Uh, they're big and saily. Uh, we're so good at this whole filming sailing thing. Professionals. So I don't know, what are we doing? Four and a half knots, I think? Yeah, four, take. four and a half. We're seeing about 15 knots and we are sitting at like 110, 120 degrees off the wind. On the so threshold. It is pretty cushy with like <laughs> perfectly flat seas because we're inside a lagoon. This is the thing. So we haven't often sailed inside lagoons. Uh, you might remember we motored our way in Roroya, no, Rangiroa a while back and it was super flat but we haven't really got the chance to put the sails up inside the lagoon. And this one is, um, it should be fine. I think people do sail it quite often. It feels touch and go because we're inside the lagoon and you know, just over there, there's coral heads and there's probably a couple just ahead of us. So we have to slightly wind our way around and being lazy cruisers that we are, we don't like doing lots of sail changes. So <laughs> we're gonna have to pull our finger out, I think. But, I'm trying uh, to dodge the kite surfer in front of us. <laughs> ooh, now there's an interesting, okay, anyone who's properly into their sailing and know their coal regs, I know that, you know, tanker versus sailboat and all that, but what happens when it's a kite surfer? <laughs> they're under sail power, so they're not quite the same as a kayaker. Who has more control of direction and who has faster speeds? They're probably going faster than we they are. They probably are, yeah. Although we're going five knots. Ooh, it's getting Woo! in. Pick it up. sailing today because it's so flat and it's quite nice conditions and there is nice wind but because it's so overcast we cannot see a thing through the water so looking out for bombies is actually quite a challenge there aren't very many but we still have to keep our eyes out and it yeah just puts us on edge slightly We have been edging our way closer to this anchorage for the last few weeks or possibly even months by this point. We knew that we wanted to come to Fakarava and we knew that we wanted to dive for the sharks. But there were so many cool places along the way that we wanted to stop. So we've had a little taster in the north and then we had to hide out here for the storm. And suddenly it's like, oh, the, the day is here. We're doing our final leg. We've got about half an hour to go until we'll be dropping the hook. And I have heard so many people talk about this place. I've been dreaming about this anchorage for like over a year now. And we're almost there. It's just going to be interesting working out how many people have had the same goal and dream. <laughs> I know, right? Because, okay, so the anchorage you're in, I think we counted it total at 65. 65 boats. At one point there were 65 boats, which if you sail in the Med or somewhere popular in the Caribbean, that's not a lot of boats. We're in the middle of the Pacific. <laughs> For 65 boats to descend in one place is unusual, okay? And so we were sat there and we watched as the anchorage slowly started to empty out. And now I reckon there's probably half the boats left, yeah. give or take. Uh, but yeah, we just don't know. We know a couple have definitely gone north, but we don't know how many people were waiting there to do exactly what we're doing. So maybe we'll bump into a lot of familiar faces. I always feel bad for saying, I hope all the boats have gone somewhere else. It makes us sound really like antisocial. But I think a lot of people have just crossed the Pacific and they've just come through the Tuamotis and they're heading for Tahiti. So I think most people are kind of emptying out of this area now. And because we've already been here and done a little loop back around, I sort of get the feeling that everywhere is emptying out and we're going to start to get used to having these places to ourselves a little bit more, which is pretty special. This sail is starting to be a bit of an exercise in what this boat can do. It's quite fun. So Indy is pretty good at pointing to wind. Like we've sailed at 30 degrees going six knots and not really lost any ground in the past. Downwind in a cat is always an interesting thing because we said earlier that we shade the main shades of the Genoa. I got the number wrong. We are getting to 120 and nothing is collapsing. But if I get to like 125, the general just starts flaking out. So um, it's kind of threading a needle between bombies, the <laughs> coral and the wind angle and try not to let any sails collapse. Because when they do, we then drift with the wind and get closer to the bombies. Because we're doing the cardinal sin. We are sailing windward of all these obstacles. <laughs> It's because if you go leeward, there's just a different one that you have this to This is true. <laughs> yeah, there's no escaping it. There's an island there, for goodness sake.
So I think we may have made the right decision in putting just two reefs in the main and putting the main up because we're kind of wiggling between 90 and 120 degrees, but it means when we are at 90, we are flying. Five point, oh sorry, 6.6 .6 knots. Yeah. Yay, and no waves. I mean, we're always having to put our reef in the Genoa, but... <laughs> Nah, it'll be fine. 6.6 .6 knots, 24 knots of wind, occasionally glancing 25. Glancing. It needs to live at 25. And what Ian didn't tell you is that we were going to put the mainsail up to first reef because there wasn't really enough wind to warrant putting a second reef in. But um, as we said, we're being lazy today and it was already set to second. Um, so we didn't want to have to reset that and then lift the mainsail that bit higher. So um, I think it has worked though, because by having less mainsail up, it's less to shadow the Genoa. So um, yeah, it has actually worked out quite well and we're getting good speeds. We're basically almost there already. Twenty-eight knots out of nowhere, just as we're arriving in the anchorage. Typical. like 10 boats in the anchorage here, which is fewer than I was expecting, so that's a good thing. Uh, we're gonna put the sails away and find a little spot to anchor. We'll definitely need to float our chain here because there are a lot of mummies around and there is a shipwreck somewhere that we have to touch. We always have like a competition to see if you can keep the winch going the hard way, which uh, curls the sail faster. But it's definitely more tiring. But even if the other person's not looking, they can hear the uh, the sound of the winch change. If you go this way, Cheater. it's a slightly different Cheating. clicking noise. And then you know you've lost. Three, two, one. <laughs> It'll do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, main down. All set. All right, turning. Main sheet in. It's not loose yet. Okay. I'll do it as we get there. Nice. Okay. Good. You're good. I'll turn back around and take us around the back of the anchorage. Top over. All right. Yep. I'll go and do the curl floats actually. Oh yeah, thank you. I'm trying to find this spot. So now the challenge is of course finding a spot where we can get shallow enough to put out sensible amounts of chain because we don't actually travel with all that much. Um, it is a good idea to have lots and lots of anchor chain for this part of the world, but we only have about 65 meters. Um, they're about 60, 65. So yeah, we're kind of slightly limited in our choices when we come to anchor, but it hasn't stopped us yet. Just about done. Just putting the last one on. Sweet. All right, well, kind of as predicted, bombies everywhere, so we are now scouting out a patch. I think we found a spot between two boats that should be okay. It certainly shallows up, which is nice. Okay, we're gonna need all 60 meters. We anchored it to 12.5 from the roller. All right, I'm ready when you are. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. I saw something in the water and I was like, oh no, what's that? Are we caught on something? It's just fish, there's loads of fish here. Nice. Okay, in a slight oversight, it turns out the boat right here is actually on the mirroring ball, so we're gonna have to lift and find a slightly different patch. Essentially, they'll spin or turn in the wind different to us. So something like this would happen, we'd just slam into them in the dark, which I don't wanna do tonight. So yeah, we'll wiggle our way to another patch. That's all right. Anchor depth is gonna be about 15. Here we go again. And of course the rain's just started. <laughs> we better be quick. <laughs> I don't know why, but I think Brenny mentioned the water clarity here is ridiculous. She's just grinning away as she's dropping the chain, which is not what we normally see when we're dropping anchor, but she's just smiling when she looks to the uh, anchor port. I'm guessing there's a lot of fish around. I just did something really dumb. Oh, that's why. I thought you were smiling at the amount of fish that was there. No, Go I on. did something Fess really up. dumb. What have you done? Well, I did it, but I fixed it. That's why I'm smiling. Come on, confess. What have you done? So we have this like slightly complicated but very good system. It works very well. When we're putting our pearl floats on, we like 
pass them underneath the trampolines and then we hang them here. But because they're on a long line, they would sit in the water and then they can swing around and hit the boat. So we tie them up temporarily by the other side of the pearl float. There's like a connection on either side. So we use another soft shackle and tie them on here. So when we come to deploy them, I tie one side onto the chain and then I just undo the soft shackle and I hold on to the, like the knot on one end. And when I release this, it falls down, the pearl float falls off into the sea and I deploy the rest of the chain and I'm left holding this. But I sort of held this end by mistake, so I dropped it and then I was holding the wrong end and then the, the momentum of it just took the whole thing into the sea and I thought, oh no, we've lost a saw shackle. But I managed to fish it back up in here and sort of turn it up on its end and this held on and now it's raining and I go inside. Run, run. Oh, the ring curtain. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. And it stopped. Whew, tropical storms. Wow. <coughs> you can literally see it like going across the surface of the water. That was it. It was about four seconds long. Seriously, that was it. The rain has already left. It was literally the time it took me to walk from the bow to the cockpit and about two more seconds worth. Whoa. And we're done. It's like a wall of water. It's an actual wall. You can see the line in the water. It's just like the other side of this monohull. And it's just a curtain. Yeah. That's that was the weirdest thing. That's crazy. Well, the curtain's down. <laughs> just... All right, we have had a decent night's sleep. Uh, we actually decided to lift anchor, which was a bit of a mission. Um, turns out there's a lot of old rock and dead coral, as well as some live coral all over this anchorage. So uh, we didn't quite get stuck, but we did have to dive down and tie on like a securing line to be able to lift the anchor safely up without damaging anything. Um, and then we moved forward onto one of the five mooring balls that are here. There aren't that many given there's about 10 boats. So we got lucky, we managed to snag one just in front of where we'd anchored actually. Uh, and then that made for a slightly more comfortable night. However, today what we plan to do Let's head over to that little village there. We have heard that there's a church, there's some wildlife, there's a little cafe bar, restaurant, snack house thing, I don't quite know. And the most important thing for us is it'll give us our first sighting of the pass that we're so excited to dive. I so want to buy one of those wings and boards. Like, <laughs> it just looks like so much fun. Yeah, every time we see people on them here, you're like, oh, I want a shot. But they're like $2,000 or something to get the whole setup. It's like even a second hand board is $500. It's yeah. nuts. It's absolutely nuts. The water clarity here is so good that we suddenly felt like, oh, we're really shallow. But I think we're probably still in like at least five meters of water here. <laughs> it just looks slightly alarming when you see these coral bombies kind of right below you. You can actually make everything out. Getting a free ride over there. So easy. This is why I always make sure I'm doing the outboard. Cheers for you. Yes, please. I am back on my off-roading flip-flops, which I'm quite enjoying. Waterproof flip-flops. So there is one thing I'm going to say about off-roading waterproof flip-flops. They are good. They are quite squicky. And when you arrive in a place like this where there is no one around, or rather, it's very peaceful and everyone is around, but everyone's just relaxing. Every step, I just feel a bit like I'm stepping on dog toys. <laughs> Which is fun because there's three dogs just here and I wonder if we can entice them in. Look at the eyes on this dog. Look at those blues. Love it. I have been meaning to show you this for ages. You know how on the on Link and Indy we have that wireless remote and we have the electric motor? This is a davit. <laughs> so basically it's like a giant windmill wheel and you just turn the handle and you can lift a full size boat with it because it's just got a rope wrapped in it. It's so incredible, easy. isn't it? Yeah, so you'll see them dotted around the shoreline. They'll have two of these massive wheels just on a couple of sticks coming out the, the sea. They drive the boat into like swings and then someone just stands at the end and just casually rolls the wheel. It's 
Right, it's cool. a bit like a fairground ride. I want to have a go on it. I kept thinking there were like meant to be umbrellas for the beach. I yes. thought it's like a hotel Especially thing. Especially when it's like falling over like that. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, that's what they are. No sharks yet. Feels a bit rickety. It's quite intimidating, isn't it? You're not standing over the verticals. Yeah, good idea. I'm sure it's perfectly safe. So the wind from these crazy storms hasn't died down. We're still seeing 30 knots. And now I feel like we're in a game show where if it gets too windy or if I get a question wrong, the floor is just going to disappear underneath me and I'm going to drop into shark infested waters. Hooray! Is it a sign that this bridge is clearly so pushed by the current they've had to put a diagonal <laughs> splint here? Ah. Like a bracer beam to stop the whole bridge just falling sideways. Good idea to stand right next to that bit, it's the That's strongest bit. I'm there, yeah. This is such a small village and I can't quite tell if anybody lives here or if it's just like little like tourist bungalows that you can stay in. There's a, like two dive shops, I think, and a restaurant. But and like an artisan. An artisan, but there's no grocery stores. So to get any supplies, you would have to go like 30 miles, 35 miles north to the other side of the atoll. I think this is the first settlement that was here and then they all moved. Um, well, I find out why though. Why? <laughs> because the first settlement was formed and then the Catholic church arrived. I yeah. think it was, and everyone didn't really get on with the priest. So everyone just started moving to the other end of the atoll. Oh, no until he was left in his own and eventually he was like, well, this is silly, and so he moved. By which point, the other end of the atoll set up the whole new church. <laughs> so, uh, we're being quiet. It's weird, there's nobody here, but the acoustics in here are really echoey because it's all stone and paint. Um, they've put these banners up everywhere, which I guess is to try and dampen it down a bit because it's quite echoey. But I just have to show you this. Was that you? That wasn't me. It wasn't me. Oh, it's the door. The door, the window. <laughs> we're all good, we're surviving. Um, I, I want to show you this because this is pretty cool. I've never seen this before, but all of the back here, or the front, and the front of the uh, communion table, it's all mother of pearl. It looks incredible. And then there's one pearl over here on this lectern as well, just in the eye of an eagle that's been carved. I mean, people have taken on long time to put this together. And all the sewing as well like it's everywhere and the whole ceiling is painted up. It's, it's really fresh. All right, we are just walking to the final corner where we're going to see the pass, but I'm nervous that we've like over egged it now. And I've been oh. thinking so much about this wall of sharks that I'm expecting to see them like dolphins jumping out of the surface <laughs> like as soon Jaws as we turn around. Like or wherever it is, they jump and <laughs> grabs the plane. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's what happen. I want. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> It looks quite wild. It actually does. And so I'm pretty confident this is going to be worth the dive because I heard the people coming back in the dive boat cheering and like hollering. Yeah. <laughs> Not in distress. I don't think they'd lost limbs, but <laughs> they definitely had a good time. So yeah, I oh, think this I is going wait. to be good. It's going to be insane. It's a shorter pass than I thought it would be. So I think the current is going out right now. We can see some standing waves and breakers on the outside because the wind is coming up this direction. So it's all kind of meeting each other and going a bit crazy. Uh, but that should mean that the morning is the best time to dive when we've got incoming current and really good visibility. So that tomorrow morning- That means we morning... have to wake up in the morning. <laughs> I've been doing night owl shifts for ages now. I'm getting really comfortable. Yeah. Well, you can just do a night dive. Or just stay up. There you go, just stay up. I'll stay up. That'll be great. So we can see there's shallows here close to shore and then it looks like it just drops off into a bit of a cliff and suddenly gets very, very deep. And uh, although we can't see anything from up here, just knowing that there's like, what, 200 sharks or something, just, just there, not very far away. And then we're gonna be in the water with them very soon. It's starting to make me a little bit nervous. It'll be fine once we're down there, but getting into the water, I'm gonna be scared that sharks is gonna come up and have a little nibble. It'll be good, I'll be brave, I'll do it. <laughs> it's getting real now. Are you scared? I'm trying to feel in my most manly, bravest looking stance right now. What are you talking about? Oh, it looks great. Yeah, you look so brave and manly and stancy. Yeah, I'm stancing. I don't think there's anything to be feared of. You can get in first then. Great <laughs> off. Um, <laughs> no, I think it's gonna be amazing. I think the sharks are definitely inquisitive here, like from just doing the anchor. 
yeah. I noticed they were pretty keen to come and say hello. <laughs> However, I don't know of anyone losing any limbs, fingers. I can always be the first. I would not be surprised to be the first. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I think we're going to be good. I can't wait to do this. I just hope that we can get it at the right point where the current's coming in and hopefully most of this chop has died down. Yeah, it looks a little bit wild right now. A little bit wild. And then if that's the case, we just need to figure out something that can be like a taxi for us because yeah. it'd be way more fun to just like dive it without having to think what's happening 20, 30 meters above us with a balloon yeah, that right. might ride up on this reef. <laughs> but. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Like, I'm going to reenact scenes from Jaws. Oh my goodness, That's you're going to be plan. unstoppable. I'm just going to go behind you and occasionally just pull <laughs> in, bite your arm or, or bite on a calf muscle when you're not looking oh, at my hands. It's going to be great. Oh, I'm so looking forward to it now. <laughs> tripped and then my hair was in my face so I couldn't see where to step. Maybe you lost your sea legs. <laughs> well there's a blue part. <laughs>